Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. In this episode, I show you how I shot and composed and retouched one of my most viral photos on 500px. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. My name is Serge Ramelli. I am a French photographer living in the beautiful city of Paris, France, the very cold city of Paris, France, and the sunny city of Los Angeles, California. And I make two tutorials per week. Click here if you want to get the raw file of this episode, which is a beautiful photo from the Golden Gate Bridge of San Francisco, where I was last week. It went viral on 500px, and I want to show you how I composed it and how I retouched it. All right, if you want to get the raw file, all you have to do is sign up to my website, put in your email address, then confirm the email. You will get right away access to my free lessons. And for each free lessons, you have presets, you have Lightroom brushes, you've got raw files for free. All you have to do is subscribe. Also, you can follow me on YouTube by clicking here or on Instagram at, at photosurge, at photosurge on Instagram. Voila. So let me show you how I did this photo. All right, mesdames et messieurs. So I wanted to tell you this little story about this photo I took in San Francisco. Uh, this is a screenshot of 500px after I put the photo up after an hour. And this is the international uh, sorting of the photos. And I w the photo was number two after a couple of hours and stayed number one on 500px for 24 hours. So whenever I have a photo that has a lot of success on the web, you know, it got like th over 10,000 views in one day. I always like to make a tutorial on it and explain you how I took it. So let me show you the whole process of finding the right composition. I started off and I went to um, Baker Beach in San Francisco because it's one of my favorite places to shoot the Golden Gate Bridge. The, 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 the sky was not amazing and the problem when you go to Baker Beach is that the sun actually uh, sets on the, on the other side, on the left side, so you never have it on the Golden Gate Bridge. But the foreground elements are super interesting. And you know that I, I spend a lot of time trying good foreground elements. I'm, and um, the sea uh, was, uh, it was quite cold and there was a lot of foam. But it was so much foam that it looked like sort of sea foam that it looked like that it was snowing literally snowing and i thought that would be an interesting uh, foreground element now i started off with the sony a7r2 with a 1635 and i was at 35 millimeter i was zoomed out and th the bridge was too small so that's my first photo i'm not happy with it so i kind of move closer i'm trying to you see uh, finding a good sky and a good monument anybody can do in the world you know you have a good sunset you've got a good monument like the golden gate bridge anybody can do. The trick to find the right composition is to find an interesting foreground element because you know you got a good background, the sky, you know you got a good middle ground, the Golden Gate Bridge, but what do you put in the foreground? That is the key. And that's, I get a lot of photos these days, you know, photo photographers all, all over the world send me photos and I think that's the one point that's the harder to get. I always try to get it as much as I can in camera. And anyway, so let's carry on. So this was a bit more interesting, you know, the you know, a lot of foam in the foreground, but I thought it was kind of a bit confusing. So I kept on moving. I'm still at 35 millimeter, and so the bridge seems pretty far away. Uh, but the light is not so much interesting also because, because of the sunset that's on the left. So I move forward. I'm trying to get more foam. That's kind of interesting, but it's also confusing. So then I said, okay, you know what? I'm going to change lens. And I, so I went on and put on a 24 to 70. Now this one, I'm at 70 millimeters, so I'm much more zoom in on the bridge so that the, we can see the bridge better. This one is completely shaky because I'm... And, and I also, I, I put a little filter on and I try... Or not, I don't know, I don't know. I don't think I put a filter on because it was getting dark. And I waited for the bridge to light up. So now I'm at uh, 70 millimeters, so I'm zooming on the bridge, but... I decided to I go F8 and I'm at four seconds. Now, I think I had a little bit of a filter on, I forgot. Anyway, I managed to get four seconds of exposure. To be honest, I don't remember if I had a filter on or not. Uh, maybe I had like a polarizing filter. I was, I, I wanted to get a four second. Now there was a photographer right in front of me in the shot. So I didn't take this one. I waited for the photographer to move. And um, this is uh, another one. And I think the first photo that I took, this is another one that I kind of liked. Uh, because I thought, oh, interesting, you know, with the four seconds of exposure, I can make this more into a snow. But the one I actually retouched at the end was this one. 
This one I like because I like the reflection. Now, I know I need to recompose that shot because it's a bit confusing with all this in front. So that's the one I choose at the end. So let's, uh, let's retouch this one. I'm going to move the toolbar away, make this a bit smaller so that it fills more the screen. And let's retouch this photo. OK, so develop module. I'm going to go into the develop module. And I, I'm traveling right now, so I'm using my laptop. So I'm trying to make some room. Here we go. OK, so uh, this is the photo. Now, often when you shoot a RAW file, it's pretty, uh, you know, it, it lacks of colors. You know, it, it's because a RAW file is not being retouched. A RAW file, you have to retouch it. And um, it's not the camera that retouches it. So I'm going to open up the shadows and bring down the highlights. That's what, always what I do. Because what I'm trying to do is get my histogram uh, to, you know, fill in the, the scale much better. So then I'm going to hold on the Alt button and use the black slider to go on the left. And anything which is blue is going to be pure black. And then I'm going to do the opposite. Now this photo is way underexposed. So I'm going to do this. Now, anything that you see in red here is, is basically reflection of lights. And I don't care to burn them a little bit. So that's kind of, look at the difference, you know. The white slider is going to make a, a big difference on this one. So, voila. So now look at my histogram. It's still a pretty, uh, you know, underexposed photo, but the values are much more, you know, from left to right. So it's, it's already much more interesting. I think I'm going to add a little bit of vibrance on this one. And I'm going to change the white balance. I'm going to go, um, let's see what shade is going to be. And maybe add a little bit of this. Yes, I think this is, let me see, that's the original photo, the way I retouched it originally. I always, uh, I went at 7,500 and plus 36. So let me go back on this one. I always like to have reference, so 75,000 and plus 36. Yeah, I added a lot of magenta. People call me Mr. Magenta and that's why. But you know what? Hey, number one on 500px, so I guess it kind of works, you know? Okay, now let's crop the photo because this foam here and that little piece of wood is distracting to me. So I'm going to frame this. And because I have a 36 million pixel, no, 46 million pixel camera, I don't care if I crop a little bit. So I'm going to crop it like this so that we see the bridge better. Make sure the bridge is straight. Uh, the way I make sure the bridge is straight is by saying that this big poles here are straight. I think that's a, that's the only way to see if your photo is really straight because the bridge itself is not straight. Press enter. Something like this. Let me see what was the cropping that I took. Yeah, it's very similar to the original cropping that I did. And um, voila, voila. Now, the only thing that I have left to do is to play around. I think I'm going to minus my clarity a little bit uh, just to make it a bit... Uh, when you take out clarity, you do minus clarity, what you get is it takes like um, hollows away, you know. You can have some small hollows that doesn't really work. So now I'm going to just take a little brush and I'm going to enhance some of the, of the, of the foam here. So I'm going to go to exposure, boost a little bit the exposure. I want to make sure that my brush is around 70 in flow and 70 in density so that I don't, s so that we don't see too much brush stroke and I'm just gonna make this a bit sort of nicer here I think I'm gonna crop even more I'd I'm gonna crop even more let me see how far did I crop the first time I want to see how I did the first time now I did it about the same like this okay this one is actually brighter than what I did the first time but that's okay you know when I retouch a photo I never do to two same retouch I like actually I think it's nicer a bit a bit brighter so I'm just you know I added a bit of white here because I think that that foam mixed up with this lone exposure is kind of cool and then I'm gonna take the gradient tool and I'm gonna I'm gonna make a gradient and lower the exposure just for the top of the photo something like this and maybe a little bit like this here just for the bottom of the photo so that we have even more attention in the middle of the photo. I think I have a couple of sensor spots because I kept changing lenses, you know, at the beach and that's never a good idea. So there's a spot here and there is a spot here using the spot healing brush tool. And uh, I think I'm gonna add some contrast on it photo. Yeah, a little bit. And that's the magic. That's the magic I was, I was kind of thinking that I really like. I think in the original photo, the way I did it, the one that's at 500px, 
yeah on this one i added a little bit of of warm here in the sky so i took a radial filter because the sun was on the left and i made a big filter which i invert the mask and feather completely and in that fi in that mask actually it's not a bad idea to add some exposure i added a bit of warmth something like this so let me show you without the radio filter and after i'm cheating a lot and i'm adding a bit of warmth and light here and voila that's the final result now there's another photo which i kind of like so usually what i do is i press command shift c to take everything that i did including uh, maybe not the brush maybe not the greater oh but the brush why not i think the brush can work i'm going to take the brush and the graded filter. I'm going to take everything that I did, not the crop, and I'm going to copy and I'm going to take this photo and then I'm going to press Command V to cro to post what I did here. Okay, interesting. Then I'm going to crop the image. I'm going to crop it a lot so that we only see. Uh, actually, I'm going to take this man out, something like this. Yeah, it's a whole different composition. Uh, I kind of like, I'm going to take out the sensor dust that I see here, kind of bothering, and I'm going to take a little brush, boost the exposure, and just, well, even, or take this brush back, and just, just add some value here. I want to make this even more white here. It's a different concept, you know, voila, something like this, just more white here, and there's another spot here that I'm taking out, boom. So that's... Um, let me see the graded filter on this one. I'm going to make it a bit lower. And on this one, I'm just going to take it out completely. Okay. So basically, I retouch one photo and I just copy and paste. It's a different framing. Let me show you both photos next to each other. That's both photo. You press C on, on in Lightroom to go into compare mode. Shift tab to go in full screen mode. L to go into bl fully black mode. And that's the two photos compared to each other. Which one do you like the most? Anyways, both of them work really well. And I wanted to share this experience with you. I'm actually going to give you the raw file of the photo here on the right. And um, you can play around with it. Uh, you just have to be subscribed on my website. You have to log in on my website to, to get the photo and play around with it. Hope you like this, guys. And um, if you like this kind of retouch, uh, I think uh, I advise you to check out my Lightroom CC course. I think you will enjoy this type of things. And I'm going to show you a little trailer of, you know, the Lightroom CC course. I go a lot more details in this type of retouching. Hope you like this, guys. And I will see you in another episode. Mesdames et messieurs, au revoir. Here is my Lightroom CC complete training. This is a four, uh, actually a six hours of training. I'm sorry, 55 lessons where I'm going to give you uh, all the different modules of Lightroom. Now, as far as the retouching module is concerned, let me show you what you're going to learn. Uh, this is a panorama I did in Mexico. I'm going to show you how I got this result by first doing the new photo merge option and then retouching it afterwards. Same thing with this photo. We go into panorama. This is the HDR option. I'm going to show you how to use this new HDR option in Lightroom. Uh, this is another panorama, but with like more of a daylight touch. This we're going to go into this is the before and this is the after very nice dramatic black and white correcting uh you know uh, lands distortions and really uh, doing manually so it's perfect and this is a full uh, only lightroom retouch black and white for portraits to really do dramatic portraits another black and white actually sorry another using the um, dual tones to make really interesting photos and also how to retouch a portrait completely into lightroom once we've done that we're also going to look into how to make books, slideshows, how to geotag your photos, how to make websites. You can see the list of all the videos there. It's my biggest course on Lightroom. Once you're done with this course, you will know Lightroom completely. You can get 30% off on this course by using the code PLP237. PLP237 and you can get 30% off at any time because you watch this video. All the raw files are included so you can play around with them. Hope you enjoy it. Do you want to get hundreds of raw files from all over the place where you can play around with? Do you want to get amazing free Lightroom presets, free brushes, free Photoshop actions? All you have to do is enter your email address. You will receive an email. You can then create an account and then you can access this free lesson tab. You can choose from over 200 in free lessons. Every free lesson is going to have source files for you to download and play around with. It's a great way to learn photography, learn post-processing 
for nothing. No money, it's all free. It's a gift to you as a member of photosearch.com. So thank you and welcome, and let's do some photos together.